In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, grace is gift received at Christ's expense. So wake us up to you and to amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was once lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Help us to understand grace and notice that everything is by this grace awakening. In Jesus' precious name, be grace-filled on this feast of St. Luke. Happy feast of St. Luke. Glory be to the Father, and to the Holy Spirit, as the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Just to repeat to everybody, um, <clears throat> we, were re we were preaching on um, Ezekiel 30, 38, 39. And Miss Eileen, she's just coming in now, told me this was on the 700 Club. The exact thing we were preaching from the Bible just started to happen. So everyone go to, uh, thank you, Eileen, for giving it to me. Everybody go to... Um, the uh, 700 Club, October 15th, and exactly what we just said from the prophesying of the end of times just happened. And it's, it's just, I think, the beginning of it. So very interesting times. I would get ready for the coming of the Lord. Amen. Now, so I want everybody to be aware of that. Exactly what we're preaching it started. Praise God. Um, I wanted the first thing I want to say. Uh, what was that? I just want to tell you about that. So please, everybody, find out and and call us up and um, get ready for the end of times. It started. It has started. So um, grace is attracted to weakness. The next point. In order to walk for a grace awakening, you must, 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 must have to forgive everybody. Now, to forgive people, what means when you have grace, it means you enter into right relationship. Now, you must to receive grace, you must receive the grace will be given to you according to the proportion that you have to forgive others. Everyone has to do something right now. If you want grace, tear up your IOU. You must tear up and you must forgive everybody. Amen. Do I hear amen? amen? Mark 11, 25, and 26. 1 Peter 3 and 7. You must forgive. Amen? Mm -hmm. Always, 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 always forgive. Mm -hmm. It's no, there is no alternative. Now, this, the rest of the night, I want to spend the bulk of this on this point. This is called being directed by the Holy Spirit. Now, what we're going to reveal to you about the Holy Spirit, I have never seen before. Now, this is called fresh manna. Amen. Why do you need to get answered prayer? Why does God want to answer your prayer with grace? 
I want to give you four quick things before we really get into this. How many ever got answer to prayer? How many are still waiting for answer to prayer? All right, now, why do you have to pray if God already knows it? Because of these four reasons. He knows what you're going to ask, right? Reason number one, he has to prove to you he is God. Number two, he has to build your faith. Number three, It has to fill you with joy. How many think we have a great God? Number four, you have to totally learn to depend on God. We're going to focus in on this walk in the Holy Spirit, which is absolutely brand new for us. I want everybody to go with me in your Bibles to, oh, there's going to be two passages, but I will go to the main one, which will be interested on my passage, is Romans 8, 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. Mm -hmm. So everybody put in there Luke 11. Remember, they were studying Jesus, and they didn't know how to pray. Mm -hmm. Remember that? And then, then we get Luke's edition of the what we call the Our Father. Now, nowhere does Jesus say, memorize the Our Father. But guess what you've done? You memorized it. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. And he searches the hearts of men, knows what is the mind of the Spirit. Because the Spirit intercedes for the saints. Does everybody understand why I call you saints again? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm calling you a biblical term. Now, you've been confused when I first started because... You said, oh, well, you thought I meant something else. The capital S in, in Catholic sainthood. But I'm using a biblical term for Paul, meaning a believer in Jesus. All right, okay, everybody got that? The, in, the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Let's break this down for us back to 26. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. Now, you always thought your weaknesses were your faults, your sins. No, no, no. Now, we did a passage last time about... When you have your weakness, I'll be made strong, and then grace is sufficient. Do you remember that? Yeah. In 2 Corinthians 12. All right, I want to give you, I want you to really box in there your weaknesses. And here's why you are to glorify God in your weaknesses. Here's what, if you box in the word weaknesses, this is brand new information. The weaknesses are all of your infirmities. What does infirmities mean? Sicknesses. This is what it means. 
When I read John 14, John quotes a, 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 um, the prophet Isaiah again. Quoting the prophet Isaiah, he says, our infirmities. When I heard this, I said, it makes complete sense. And my whole life up to this point, I've never seen what I'm going to share with you. Amen. Are you excited about this? Now, what does it mean that you have infirmities? Does it mean you are sick? No. I'm going to give you two things of what it means. Number one, it means I do not know what to pray for. The second thing it means, I don't know how to pray. Have you ever wondered in the New Testament why Jesus never taught us how to preach, never taught us how to do miracles? Because when you flow in the spirit, which is another teaching, you'll do it. It happens. Now you have to study on your own. St. Vincent Lorenz, I told you that. He's done so many miracles. He says, I, I late that I learned this. Okay, everybody got the two points so far? Now, if you look at verse 26, weaknesses is infirmities, infirmities, see now it's proven, look at verse 26, isn't it proven with the next line, we don't know how to pray. Mm -hmm. Draw an arrow back to your weaknesses, to your infirmities, that's it. How I know my whole life I missed that. And so did you. Now, here is God's solution to our infirmities and our weaknesses. God's solution is you must have the spirit of God take over. The spirit of God's got to take over and, and pray in intercession through you. Hopefully everybody here has the Holy Spirit in you. But you don't know how to pray. So what do you quickly say? And our Father. You say a Hail Mary. But the Spirit himself intercedes with sighs too deep for words. When the Holy Spirit prays for you, verse 26, there's no words. There are no words. Now watch this. When there are no human words, the Holy Spirit is operative praying for you. When there are no words, the Holy Spirit is operative praying for you. I'm going to show you how that's done. When the Holy Spirit is operative, he never uses English. When you get your prayer answered by the Holy Spirit, there's a new language offered through you to God that can't be uttered. Now, we're going to have a practicum at the end of our session. What you need to do is ask the Holy Spirit humbly, because he's God, to, within his new language, take this to glory.
Now, this is so exciting. When you are un united with the Holy Spirit. Let's do this logically. Is the Holy Spirit God? Yes. Now, because the Holy Spirit is God, the Holy Spirit can only pray because he's God, prayers that God wants to hear. Number two, when the Holy Spirit prays what God wants to hear, then he will end his time of answering your prayer. When the Holy Spirit prays through you, the Holy Spirit only prays through the revealed mind of God. The Holy Spirit, repeat, prays only according to the revealed mind of God. Here's what you do on your part. And you're going to start tonight. He says this. You must have a prayer meeting with the Holy Spirit inside of you. When you do that, you say to the Holy Spirit, I give you permission to take over the prayer. Even tonight, when you go to bed, you say, Holy Spirit, pray through me tonight to the Father. St. Paul says, a mind boggling verse. He says to us in 1 Thessalonians 5, he says to us, pray without ceasing. How do you do that? But tonight, you say, Holy Spirit, take over. Now, The Bible says this from the psalm. I want you to pray to open my mouth, Lord, and you fill it. The Holy Spirit is equal to the task. You must ask the Holy Spirit tonight to pray in your sleep. Have the Holy Spirit pray through you through the night. He is equal to the task. When you have this prayer request, you are praying in the level of God's Holy Spirit. You can pray without ceasing through you. The Holy Spirit can do this. You will be learning how to pray on the level of the Holy Spirit. It's startling because we don't know how to pray. Now, I want to show you something mind-boggling. We'll go into the original language, okay? What's going to happen is this. It's going to change the way you think if you do these things. Is, uh, many of you are thinking, is tongues important? Yes. 
You've got to learn with me right now to pray in the level of the Holy Spirit. We've studied together Jesus' prayer life. Was it good? You betcha. And then we're looking up the times that he was praying. I want to take you to a verse which I've used about a thousand times, probably just this year alone. But I want to show you something in the original language, what it means. All right, everybody go with me, please. To Ephesians 3.20. Are you with me? Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who by the power at work within us. Everybody got that? To Jesus. By the power at work within us. What's the power? Holy Spirit. So guess what grace does? It supplies with you within power within you. How many found yourself, even today, saying, I don't want to do that when it's not of God? And years ago, you would have done it. And you are so disinterested in doing it. But years ago, you would have done it. Sure, let's do this. But now you're just saying, mm -mm, I can't do that because there's a power in you. But that's not my point yet. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. I don't know how to pray. But he's able to do more abundantly grace than all we ask or think. And this means there, this, he got so excited, Paul does. This is called a doxology through him, with him, in him. To him be glory in the church, the called out ones, and in Christ Jesus to all generations. What happens to grace? It keeps going. Forever and ever, amen. Now, when you ask something from God, you must get back from him more than you asked for. So if we all gave up something in the kingdom, what does Jesus say? He was given a father and mother will get more blessings than you can handle. He says persecution besides. Welcome, welcome, welcome. But you get far back more than you can imagine. Has anybody experienced that yet? No, let's break it down for you. Prayer with the grace element depends on the power in us. Look what it says here far more abundantly. Number two, when you pray in the spirit, like we're learning, it's above all, it's above abundance. God was Italian. Because when he fed the 5,000, there were 12 baskets left over. Talk as you will, I believe in the miraculous. What did God do there too? He multiplied the baskets. You can never, as a believer in Jesus, just give a person what they want. You must give them more than they can handle. Do you see the power of your prayer? So this is called, ready? 
Number two, this is called abundantly above. Number three, when you pray this prayer. Is this good, Miss Jackie? Mm -hmm. When you have, when you, you learn to travel to the utmost of God, you, you ascend in grace to the utmost of God. Now that's called exceedingly abundant above. Mm -hmm. You see the power of grace? Sister Marie, do you like grace? Number four, when you pray to the utmost, the next point would, ready for this? Your reasoning runs out. You enter a new plane with God. I think St. Teresa of Avila again called up going up to an, another mansion. <laughs> she has seven mansions. Uh, the next thing is number five. You enter into the supernatural plan of the Holy Spirit. Okay, you want me to repeat five? Each one's building on the other. So you go, you go well into the supernatural. And then you could see your whole prayer life is entirely different. A new thought on, on that. All right, those points are done. So here's what I want you to do. With your heart filled with life, bless the Holy Spirit tonight and ask him to put these prayers. Do you see what you get when you have grace? Now, we just read in Romans what the Holy Spirit does. He what? Intercedes. Is he, is he using English? No. Is he using Hebrew, Marie? No. Is he using Greek? No. Is he using Latin? No. He's using his new language to the Father. Now, oh, oh, let me give you number six. This is called the revelation of God. God will show himself to you like never before. In chapter seven of Hebrews, Jesus forever lives to make what? Intercession. Do you remember that line? Uh, Hebrews 7.25 when there's an intercession going on I want you to realize something you have realized because I am a kingdom we are kingdom of priest in intercession I rule the world because you priest go before the greatest sacrifice there is. And because you pray in the spirit, your intercession rules the world as priest. In intercession, you must be directed by the Holy Spirit only. You are gaining what is called the spirit and the power of Elijah for the last days. When you could stand by yourself and use this. The secret of your life in intercession, the getting answer to prayer, power of prayer. The secret is this. It's the truth. It's always been in you. 
of God's word. For you to do something this powerful with all of you have direct access tonight. You must line up the Holy Spirit of God with the word of God. Let me give you an example. Say I want somebody in my house to come to God. Do I ever have to say, if it be your will? Does God want me to pray for sinners? If someone's sick, does God want me to pray for them? Yes. So what I do if I want to see that the Holy Spirit's operative through me and the request that I have, I say this, is this in line with the word of God? Psalm 37, verse 4. And the answer you should have is yes. So when I'm in my prayer life, I say to God, for example, I have a prayer that to this day is answered but not answered. And I keep saying to God, because, as I understand his word, is this in accordance with the Bible? And the answer is yes. So now what I have to do is beg, ask the Holy Spirit to pray through me for the most powerful revelation of God in my life. During the time of the Gentiles, which when the nations seem to take over the world and the Jews go into their little corner, until 1948, do you remember that? Mm -hmm. What happened is this. For the most part, during the time of the Gentiles, you ready for this? This is gonna blow your mind. During the time of the Gentiles, which were still in, God is hiding. When the Jews were his people obeying him, God was in hiding. Now, we are on the verge of God not hiding anymore. It's begun. So I told the people today, you missed it, sister. I'm going to give you a prophetic preaching today. We are going to become smaller. And not only are we going to come smaller, we're going to see the full majesty of God like never before. That means you mighty men and women of God, even you mamby-pamby type, Save us, Lord. You're going to finally come alive. Mm -hmm. And you who've been studying for umpteenth years the Bible, you're going to get out and teach it. Mm -hmm. Now, this year in the Jewish calendar is 5,781 which means take your mask off. What does Satan do this year to us? Have us put our mask on. When you study the, the, the numbers, sister, 5,781 in Hebrew, you study this. It says that my people will come together in a small way and I will show my glory. So what, what are we gonna do now? 
we are coming together. And the, I believe within one to two, three months, I believe every one of you are going to report to me a new power of the Holy Spirit you never knew you had. So if we're going to intercede like the Spirit, priests do that. Two, we're empowered by the Holy Spirit. Intercession. Three, the Spirit of God and the Word of God is working in me. I'm going to give you a holy equation. It, number six, it must be in accordance with the word of God. We just talked about that. It must be in accordance with the word of God. Go to Psalm 33, 6. I want to give you a biblical equation. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. And all their host by the breath of his mouth. Right now, here's the biblical equation. Of the word plus the spirit equals the creative power of God. When you pray, this is what's happening to you. What are you using? You are using the creative power of God. Then you get into the exceeding abundance of Ephesians 3.20. You are praying the creative power of God. Let me explain. You're asking God in your prayer life because you don't, your infirmities. You don't know how to pray. So when we're praying, we're praying for something that doesn't exist yet that we can say. You pray for that which doesn't exist yet. This is called again, the exceeding abundance. When you do the exceeding abundance, you have what is called, I understand that the promises of God on my life are yes and amen. Then you will realize one thing. God has taken me to a deeper level and the Holy Spirit. Because most people who go to church, save us, Lord, save us. There is such super, 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 superficial. That's why they gotta leave church early. This is where the will of God is completely revealed to you. And then you're going to see the power of what happened to the Blessed Mother. So this will be one of the greatest talks you've ever heard on the Blessed Mother. I want you to go with me to First Chronicles 17. This is about Jesus and Mary. All right, verse three. But that same night, 
the word of the Lord came <coughs> to Nathan. It sounds like a hot dog place. We'll circle the word night. How do, when do you receive grace? It sounds like Nicodemus, doesn't it, a little bit? Yes. Is it the night time? But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, the hot dog man. Go and tell my servant. Now, I underline the word servant. The word servant means the prophet. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, you shall not build me a house to dwell in. And I'm going to show you probably next week that how to get a full answer to prayer. Verse 5, for I have not dwelt in a house since the day I led Israel up to this day. God never dwelt in a house. But I have gone from tent to tent and from dwelling to dwelling. Verse 6, in all the places where I moved with all Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel? whom I commanded to shepherd my people, saying, why have you not built me a house? So in all the time of the judges, did God say, where's my house? Because God knows we don't know how to pray. So he has to build the house for himself so we know how to pray. Now, can everyone say with me, pretty much, you all pray at your house. I know you do. But how many feel better praying when you're in a church? So underline that verse 6. Why have you not built me a house of cedar? I never said that to anybody. Because we can't build for God. What God wants. You ready for this? Can I tell you what God ultimately wants? You. And what does he want about you? To know how to pray. In his house that he has made. Verse 7, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, thus says the Lord of hosts, there it is, the Sabaoth, I took you from your pasture, from following the sheep, that you be prince over my people Israel, and I've been with you wherever you went, and I've cut off your enemies before you, and I'll make for you a name, a Shem, like the name of the great ones of the earth, who's the greatest person, the king that ever lived, David. Outside Jesus. Do you know there's more written about David than any other person in the Bible outside Jesus? David has the most Bible information we have about him more than any person. Even more than Moses. Like the name of the great ones of the earth. And so you could see right there in verse 8, all the information. I will appoint a place for my people Israel. I'll plant them and they shall dwell in their own place. Look, at, I will appoint. I will plant. I will dwell in them. That they may have their own place and be disturbed no more. When you have grace, you're never disturbed again. And violent men shall waste them no more as formerly. From the time that I appointed judges. And this is David hearing about 100 years prior to this. As formerly. Uh, on my people of Israel, I will subdue all your enemies. Now, what's going all the way back to Genesis? The power of what? Subduing. Moreover, uh, uh, moreover, verse 10, I declare to you that the Lord will build a house. And if the Lord doesn't build a house, 
your life is in vain. And if you don't know where the house of the Lord is, your life is in vain. Unless the Lord build a house, Psalm 127. So if you underline that, when your days are fulfilled to go with your fathers, I'll raise up your offspring to you. One of your own sons, I will establish. This is the same thing as 2 Samuel 7.14. It's just another ex explanation of it. So put in there the incarnation. When your days are fulfilled to go to be with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you. One of your own sons, I will establish his kingdom. Now, you are kingdom of priests. You rule. Right there in the line, verse 13, there's the most important phrase of the Old Testament. I will be with his father. He shall be my son. I, will t I shall not take my steadfast love from him as I took it from you who was before you. But I will confirm him in my house. These are the words of Gabriel to Mary. In the kingdom forever, his throne shall be established forever. In accordance with these words, in accordance with all of this vision, Nathan spoke to David. And stay tuned next week, next time that we meet to continue this incredible teaching. I will answer for you how Mary prayed. Did Mary ever say, teach me how to pray? Something phenomenal happened to Mary. We will find out one of the best Marian teachings you have ever heard in your life. Even if you travel today to Chestahoa, this is the most incredible teaching on the Blessed Mother you have ever heard. Don't miss an exciting episode. Stay tuned. Heavenly Father, we have need a grace awakening and the power and the might and all that is Jesus to live this grace. Grace abundantly, grace exceedingly abundant, grace that's nonstop, grace that will lift me up, grace that will bring me into the atmosphere of glory and the power of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.